Good day, brethren. Opening prayer for today's service. Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank thee and honor thee for the grace to see the fifth month of the year 2021. We thank thee for the gift of life. We thank thee for every member of New Life Assembly, our elders, every man, every woman, and our children. We thank thee for the grace to see the second Sunday of the month of grace. We thank God for Ephesians 2, 8 that says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Father, we want to thank you for everyone you are going to be using today to minister to your people. Thank you for the technical team, people working behind the scene for the church programs. Thank you for Daddy Gio. Thank you for Mommy Gio and the entire redeemed family. Thank you because you will continue to uphold and strengthen your people at this difficult time. Lord, please, in your mercy, receive our thanks. Thank God for the word that you have given your son for us for the month of May in Romans 8 verse 37 that we are more than conquerors through him that strengthens us. Romans 8 37 says, No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the power of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord Almighty, for your faithfulness, for your kindness, for your mercies, O oh Lord, which endure it forever. Father, receive all the glory. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hello and welcome to New Life Assembly. My name is Tammy Nunu. We're so glad to have you here with us this morning. We know that God is going to speak to you through this service. We're about to go into a time of worship, but first, we want to thank you for your continued faithfulness and generosity as you give to support the work that God is doing through New Life Assembly. The choir will now lead us in worship. God bless you as you join in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Welcome to this wonderful, glorious day. We give God all the praise. We give God all the honor. We give God all the glory. We're just going to sing love songs to the Lord this morning, just to tell Him how much we love Him for all that He's done for us, even the things He may not have done. Because He's a good God. He's a wonderful Father. We worship You, oh God. This song is a really simple song. It just says, I love you, Lord, with all my heart. To be with you is all I want. And that's it. It's just a love song to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning. Hallelujah.
song be a sweet sound in your ear, oh God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe this is your season, church? Because it's my season and it's my time. Hallelujah.
We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We worship you, our Lord, our Savior, the hope of Israel. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. On this day, we worship, we magnify your name. We thank you and thank you. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we have worshipped. Amen and amen. Shall we bow our head and pray as we go into the word? Our Father in heaven, we hallow your holy name. We bless and adore you. We thank you, Lord, for this month thus far. Thank you for this year thus far. Thank you for your faithfulness and your loving kindness. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for what you're doing. And thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. Father, as we go into the word, we ask that you lead us by your Holy Spirit. Let it be all of you and none of flesh in the name of Jesus. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And at the end of this day, let your name and your name only be glorified. Thank you, righteous Father, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. I trust you and your loved ones are doing very well. God bless you in Jesus' name. This morning I want to share a short word with us from the word of the month, which will be found in Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 37. If you want to give the word a title, it is you are more than conqueror. Why don't you just declare that into your life, that I am more than conqueror. Make a declaration into your life this morning, brothers and sisters, and say, I am more than conqueror in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 37, reading the Amplified Version of the Bible, the word of the Lord says, Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Mm. More than conquerors through him who loved us. Praise the Lord. You see, the Bible makes us realize, as children of God, we are perpetually victorious people. We may not always see it. We may not always feel it. We may not always live like it, but it's true nonetheless. This passage of scripture has brought comfort and hope to the hearts of believers for 2,000 years. It reminds us that we're more than conquerors in spite of how things appear to us or in spite of how we may feel about circumstances around us. There are so many instances from the Bible of God bringing miraculous victory to his people Israel. Israel, humanly speaking, was no match for the enemies. But God told them not to be afraid and that he will fight their battles for them. According to Exodus, the 14th chapter, verse 14, it says, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord is saying the same thing to us, brethren, that he will fight for us and we will hold our peace. We also see that in Jeremiah, the first chapter, verse 19, it says, they will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I'm with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. That tells me that whatever challenges that confront us will not prevail against us because God is with us. A man that has God's backing is more than a conqueror. 
The Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? In our main test this morning, morning, there are three major phrases. And we will look at these phrases one at a time. Uh, the Holy Spirit will help us to unpack it. Amen? The first phrase is more than conquerors. The second phrase is in all these things. The third one is through him who loved us. Firstly, more than conquerors. The phrase more than conquerors refers to those who gain a surpassing victory. It means to be completely victorious, to carry away an overwhelming victory. It literally has the idea of us being super conquerors. That's what the Bible says we are, brethren. But that is not always how we feel. Most of the time, most believers I know seems to be overwhelmed by life. Rightly so, because life can be overwhelming. When, Paul, when Apostle Paul writes that we are more than our conquerors, he uses a tense that suggests a present tense active situation. In other words, he's saying that Christians keep on winning a glorious victory. And I am declaring the same word to you. Keep on winning a glorious victory in the name of Jesus. What Apostle Paul is saying is, that, is, is this, that even when all of life is arrayed against us, we're still more than our conquerors. Amen? Regardless of how things feel to us or look to us, we're still more than conquerors. That is the clear testimony of the word of God in 1 Corinthians 15, 57. The Bible says, But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to give thanks to God always for the victory we enjoy, the victory of healing, the victory of deliverance, the victory over our enemies, victory over security. The list is endless. Secondly, let's look at the phrase, in all these things. Apostle Paul says that we are more than conquerors in all these things. Most of us have the idea that victory occurs when we are living lives that are free from troubles, afflictions, and heartaches. Paul says that reality is something far different. We are more than conquerors in spite of everything the world and the devil can throw at us. The, these things Paul is, Apostle Paul is referring to can be found in Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 33 to 35. Let's take a look at this list of problems. You will see that many of these things are a common part of life. Verse 33 says, Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Hmm. Who shall bring a charge against God, God's elect? It is God who justifies. Brethren, we are more than conquerors in spite of those who bring charge against us. We are victorious over all those who will challenge our relationship with the Lord. God has justified us and nothing will ever change his mind. Amen? Verse 34, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, also, who also makes intercession for us. We are more than conquerors, brethren, in spite of those who condemn us. We are victorious over those who would declare that we are worthy before the Lord. Jesus Christ died for us on the cross and shed his blood to save us, and no one can undo what he did for us on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? We are more than conquerors. In spite of those who confound us, the world and the devil have ever been the enemies of the children of God. The attacks are frequent and they are severe. In spite of everything they throw in our direction, we're still victorious 
over all the effort to defeat us or to destroy us. Because the devil has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But blessed be the Lord who has come to give us life and life more abundantly. Let's look at the list of these attacks the children of God face in this life. Tribulation. Uh, this, um, the word tribulation means to be squeezed or to feel pressure. Uh, this is a common problem all people face. But Jesus reminded, reminded us in John, the 16th chapter, verse 33, that these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord. In him we will have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You know, Jesus had warned us that in this world we will have, you know, there will be trials, there will be tribulation. But in all of it, he's saying that we be of good cheer, that we should be cheerful because he has overcome the world. Amen? The second word that I found from that passage of scripture is distress. Distress literally means a, a narrow place. Uh, it means to be uh, between a, 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 hard, a, a rock and a hard place, amen? It means to be hemmed in by one's circumstances. It, it, it means to be left in between and in between. It means to be trapped with no way out. And I, you know, I'm sure some of us can identify uh, with this, you know, when we feel so distressed, when we feel there is no way out of a situation. But God is saying to us that he will not leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Persecution. This, is, this means suffering inflicted on us because of our relationship with Jesus. And, and the list goes on and on. Famine, a lack of necessary resources. This is the natural byproduct of persecution. Nakedness, a lack of proper clothing to be in a state of destitution. We thank God that we live in, in, in an environment, we live in a society where we can worship God without any uh, restraint. Uh, or, but there are many Christians all over the world that do not have the, the advantage that we do have, you know. And Perry, we, we, brethren, we're, we're in a perilous times, church. You know, the threat of imminent and awful danger, the threat of, um, of, of COVID, uh, the threat of, the threat of uh, economic downturn, and the list is on and on. It talked about sword, which is the threat of murder. Uh, it the, 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 the means the cold, hard, death-dealing instrument that sent many believers out into eternity. And brethren, God will help us in the name of Jesus. Now, these are the few challenges, you know, we can see in the word of God that Christians do go through. Thirdly, uh, the phrase, true him, who loved us. Paul tells us that the only reason we are victorious in this life is through him that, that, that loved us. Uh, when, 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 when you experience any form of victory, don't you think it's because of what you have done? Don't you think it's because of the amount of prayers that you have prayed? Don't you think it's your, it's your knowledge or your know-how? No. Our victory does not lie within ourselves. Our victory rests in him and him alone. Amen? So don't you claim that victory for yourself. Claim it because, um, claim it because Jesus has chose to give you that victory. No matter what it is in our, in our lives, let, it, let us always trace it to God. Amen? We do not deserve to be qualified as more than a conqueror. Only bought for his love, he qualified us. He proved his love to us by sending his only begotten son, Jesus, according to John, the third chapter, verse 16. But in Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 8, the Bible says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, 
Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, brethren, Christ died for us. The love of God for us, his children, is so vast, is so deep, and so far-reaching that God wants us to know that nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from his great love for us. Verses 38 to 39 are commentary on the depth, breadth, height, and length of God's love for his children. Paul tells us that none of the things mentioned in these verses can separate us from the love of God. Uh, the word separate there means to divide, to put asunder, to divorce, to put away. And the word able in verse 38 means to have power. In other words, no power. Amen? None of these things people fear so much has any power to divide us from his awesome love. Not COVID-19, not sickness, not lack, brethren. When we go through these things, we need to be assured in our, in our hearts that even the pains, sorrows, and affliction of life are evidence of God's love for us. Apostle Paul experienced his share of trials and torments of life. Uh, of life. In 2 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to 28, we will see a, 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 just a glimpse of what Apostle Paul went through. Uh, l- l- let's quickly read that. But in all of these trials and tribulation that Apostle Paul went through, yet he tells us in Romans 8, 38, that he is convinced. Let me, let, let me just go through those experiences first. Um, 11, 23. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three to 28, I read. And are they ministry servants of Christ, the Messiah? Apostle Paul says, I'm talking like one beside himself, but I'm more with far more extensive and abundant labors with far more imprisonment, beaten with countless stripes, and frequently at the point of death. Five times I received from the hands of the Jews 40 lashes, all but one. Three times I have been beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I have been aboard a shipwreck at sea. A whole night and a day are spent adrift adrift on the deep. Many times on journeys, exposed to perils from rivers, perils from bandits, perils from my own nation, perils from the Gentiles, perils in the city, perils in the desert places, perils in the sea, perils from those Sorry, perish from those posing as believers, but destitute of Christian knowledge and pity. In toil and hardship, watching often through sleepless nights, in hunger and thirst, frequently driven to fasting by want. We, 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 we thank God because none of us can say we've been through one quarter of what Apostle Paul has been through. But this is a man uh, that truly spent and spent for Christ. And I pray that the same spirit will rest upon us in the name of Jesus, in this church. It will rest upon us collectively and individually in the name of Jesus. The, 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 the grace to spend and be spent for Christ, you know, to, 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 to do all that is necessary Amen? To please our God. And that's what Apostle Paul did. 
because he knew that in all of these things that, you know, he is more than a conqueror, amen? Uh, he, he says, in hunger and thirst, frequently driven to fasting by want. Not that he wants to fast, but perhaps he didn't have food. He says, in cold and exposure and lack of clothing. Verse 28 says, and beside those things that are without, there's the daily inescapable pressure of my care and anxiety for all the churches. Wow. You know, and this is the same Paul that says in Romans, the eighth chapter, verse 38, that for I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor thing presence. And we have not been, uh, we have not experienced a quarter of what he has. But he says, no things present and threatening, no things to come, no powers. He's saying that he is persuaded. That phrase is in the perfect tense. It means, it means that Paul stands convinced and nothing can change his mind about the issue. He knows that God knows what he's doing and that believers can count on the boundless eternal love of Jesus Christ to see them through whatever they may face in this life. That was Paul's prayer for the Ephesians believers. And it is God's will and prayer for us, church. According to Ephesians, the third chapter, verse 16 and 21. The Bible says, say, may God grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself, indwelling your innermost being and personality. May Christ, through your faith, actually dwell, settle down, abide, making permanent home in your hearts. Amen. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love, that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God-devoted people and experience of, of, of that love. What is the breadth and length and height and depth of it, that you may really come to know practically, true experience for yourselves, church. That is Apostle Paul's prayer for us, that we know Christ for ourselves, true experience, not through somebody else's experience, amen? That you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Now to him, but in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within your, us, is able to carry out his purpose and to super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. To him the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. So be it. Brethren, per per permit me to just read that in another version of the Bible. Um, I like the amplified version, but I, I think I need to I want, us to, to, I want us to allow the, the words and the prayer to sink into, into our spirit man. Amen? In, in, in um, Ephesians 3. Let's look at another. Okay, let's look at the New King James Version. Romans, uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 3. Okay, 
Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. I'm going to read the New King James Version just to bring it down so that we can have uh, an understanding of that prayer. And my prayer is that may the Holy Spirit uh, allow this prayer to, to sink into our spirit man so that we begin to function according, so that that words will become life in our lives. Amen? The, the, the verse 16. It says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you be rooted and grounded in love. May we be rooted and grounded in love. May, may be able to comprehend with all the saints that is with the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. You know, church, I pray that um, as we pray that prayer, uh, something will take place in the realm of the Spirit. Uh, we will begin to walk in the power of the Word of God. Amen. Um, it says, and I, and I pray, this is the Passion Translation, and it says, and I pray that He would unveil within you the unlimited riches of His glory and favor on, unto supernatural strength floods your inner being with his divine might and explosive power. Then, by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep into you, inside you, and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Then you will be empowered to discover what every holy one experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all of his dimensions. How deeply, intimate, and far-reaching is his love. How enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond measurement that transcend our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbeliev unbelievable dream, and exceed your widest imagination. He will undo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Amen? Now, we offer up to God all the glorious praise that rises from every church and every generation through Jesus Christ, and all that will yet be manifest through time and eternity. Amen and amen. So we are more than conquerors, but we don't have to do anything, brethren, to ensure our victory. Victory is ours because the Lord, Lord Jesus, loves us and promises us that his love is the guarantee of our conquest, of all the things that come against us. Amen. He is the guarantee because of his love, his deep love for us. And may we have an understanding of that love. Amen. And as I conclude, I begin to bring the word to a conclusion. The question for you and I today is, are you convinced? If you're saved, without any doubt, your mother now can grow. As long as you know and you believe that God loves you, you are more than conqueror. I don't always feel like it's true. I don't always live like it is true. But the Bible assures me 
that it is. It is. Our prayer should be that we will accept by faith the promises of God concerning the victory we have in Jesus. Our prayer should also be that God will help us to live out that victory every day in spite of how things look to us or how we feel about circumstances. Amen. Father, in every facet of our life, make us more than a conqueror in the name of Jesus. Father, help us to accept by faith the prom your promises concerning the victory we have in Jesus. Father, help us to live out that victory every day of our lives, in spite of how things look to us or how we feel about circumstances. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is now the time in the service where we have the opportunity to give. So I invite you to give your tithes and offerings. Details of how to give are now on the screen. Let everything that has bread praise the Lord. Praise Him for His mighty work. Let all creation sing His Hallelujah. Let us pray over our tithes and our offering. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we want to say thank you for your faithfulness in our lives and in your church. Here, Lord, we have brought our tithes and offerings before you. 
Lord, you commanded us to bring tithes into your storehouse, that there may be food there and no gold. Father, you promised us in your word that if we will, should do our part of the deed, you will devour the for our sakes. And so, Lord of hosts, here is our tithe before you, God. Father, devour, devour us for our sakes in the name of Jesus. Spiritual devourer, physical devourer, Father, material devourer. Devour them for us as a church and as a people in the name of Jesus. Devour the devourer against our finance, against the finance of your church, against our health, against our lives, against the life of our loved ones. Father, devour, devour us for our sakes, O God, that your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be able to give our tithes, O God. We declare in your hearing, O God, that we will not fail, Father Lord, to continually do this, that there may continually be food in your house, in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, we also present our offerings unto you this day, O God. Father, let it be a holy offering unto you. Use it, O God, for the propagation of your work here on earth. Use it, O God, as a memorial before you concerning each and every one of us. Father, and remember us, O God, for good. In this month, in this year, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal Father. For it is in Jesus' mighty and glorious name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Again, we thank you for your faithfulness and generosity in giving to support the work that God is doing at New Life Assembly. Remember, you can give at any time. Details of how to give are available at rccgnla.org.uk. If this is your first time here, we are grateful you chose to spend part of your weekend with us and we hope you make New Life Assembly your church home. We would like to know you, so if you're watching via our website, please click the connect button below this video to fill out a connection card. If you're watching on YouTube, you may also connect with us at any time. Just go to rccgnla.org.uk to fill out a connection card. Once again, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. On Sundays like this when we meet, we start the day with Sunday school from 9.45 a.m. to 10.55 a.m. Following this, we have the main service which starts at 11 a.m. We will now have prayers for those that celebrated their birthdays and wedding anniversaries in the last week. Prayer for birthdays and wedding anniversaries. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Almighty Jesus, we worship you. Father, you are the King of Kings the God of gods, the Alpha and the Omega. Father, you are the gracious God, O Lord. Daddy, we come before you today to celebrate your children, O Lord. Father, we thank you for their lives, O Lord. We thank you for the anointing that you are giving them, O Lord. We thank you for the miracles that you are doing in their lives, O Lord. Father, we worship you, O Lord. Daddy, as you celebrate today, O Lord, we pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, sickness, sorrow, and sadness will be far away from them, O Lord. Daddy, whatever they touch will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord. Daddy, your glory will show in their lives, O Lord. Father, we thank you today, O Lord for what you are doing in their lives, O Lord. For the blessings of God upon them, O Lord. Father, we love you, O Lord. And we ask you, Father, we thank you, O Lord. Daddy, you will continue to bless them, you will continue to prosper them, O Lord. Daddy, they will celebrate more, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord. Father, whatever they touch, in the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord, we glorify your name, O Lord. Heavenly Father, we love you. Daddy, we thank you and we glorify your name. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. For those who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries, O Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your children who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries today, O Lord. My God, my Father, they will always have a reason to be thankful to the Almighty God, O Lord. Daddy, we pray that sorrow and sickness will be far away from them, O Lord. Daddy, we pray for happiness, joy, and peace in their households, O Lord. Father, may you continue to bless them, O Lord. Daddy, may you continue to be with them, O Lord. Father, they will always cherish you, O Lord. Daddy, we pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord, nothing will separate your children, O Lord. Daddy, the children 
children that you are blessed them with, oh Lord. Father, the children will continue to do well. The children will prosper, oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we love you, oh Lord. Daddy, we thank you, oh Lord. Daddy, we pray for your mercies over this household, oh Lord. Daddy, surround them with your love, oh Lord. Daddy, surround them. Shower them with your father's blessings, oh Lord. Make a way where there seems to be no way, oh Lord. Father, we love you, oh Lord. Everlasting Father, we thank you, oh Lord. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Details of all church activities, including events mentioned in the announcement, can be found on our website at rccgnla.org.uk. Thank you for worshipping with us today. Have a wonderful week and God bless you.